Hello friends, this video on atoms part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched part 1 before going ahead with part 2. So this was all about the history of atom. So now let us quickly look at the important theories which came up and which gave their opinion on the atomic structure. So the first one was Dalton's atomic theory. So let us quickly look at the Dalton's atomic theory. Dalton said that matter consists of indivisible atoms. That means according to Dalton, we cannot further divide atoms, which was however proved incorrect in later times. The theory said that all the atoms of a given element have identical properties, including identical mass. Atoms of different elements have different mass. Compounds are formed when atoms of different elements combine in a fixed ratio. You would have studied about compounds, elements, mixtures, all these things you would have studied in your chemistry, right? So Dalton basically gave the uh, definition or he defined the atomic theory more inclined to chemistry, right? Because he, he talked about atomic number, mass number, um, formation of compounds. So he talked about all those aspects of uh, atom. So he said that if, if for one element, all its atoms will have the same mass. Similarly, for a different element, all its atoms will have a different mass, right? Now, when when do we have compounds? When atoms of different elements combine in a fixed ratio. He also told that chemical reactions involve reorganization of atoms. These are neither created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction. That means when, when one substance reacts with another substance, what happens? He told that atoms get reorganized. Reorientation of atoms take place and there is no creation or destruction involved. So, the success of Dalton's atomic theory lied on these points. It was successfully able to explain the law of conservation of mass because he told that all the atoms of an identical element will have the same mass. Law of, con law of constant composition, as he mentioned that uh, when atoms of different elements will combine in a fixed ratio, only then compounds are formed. Law of multiple proportion. So these were some of the laws which were very truly or very correctly satisfied by Dalton's atomic theory and that is why Dalton's atomic theory became a success at that time. However, there were several limitations which were involved with the Dalton's atomic theory. It failed to explain the results of many experiments. For example, what happens when glass is rubbed with silk or fur? Electricity is generated, right? We spoke about it when we were studying about electrostatics. When you rub a glass with silk, what will happen? Electricity gets generated. So, people questioned Dalton that you say that whenever two substances react, any, whenever any reaction takes place, it is because of the reorganization of atoms. So, in this case, how is electricity generated? Because you say that no atoms are created, no atoms are destroyed. It is only the reorganization of atoms. So, Dalton was unable to explain the formation or generation of electricity in these cases. Right? But experimentally, they did happen. Right? When you place a comb near small bits of paper, the papers get attracted towards the comb. Similarly, when you rub a balloon on a piece of cloth and then you when you try to bring it towards the wall it sticks to the wall so all these things all these things where there was some generation of something was involved Dalton was not able to explain it with his atomic theory so this was the reason of failure of Dalton's atomic theory because these experiments were something which everybody was actually observing in nature it was actually happening Right? That means there has to be reason behind it, but Dalton's atomic theory could not explain that reason. And this became the fa reason of failure of Dalton's atomic theory. It failed to explain subatomic particles that were discovered in the 20th century. So Dalton's atomic theory told that atom was the smallest particle. There cannot be anything inside atom. But later, in the 20th century, it was found that atom was further divided into electron, proton and neutron. So this theory could not explain those subatomic particles.
Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.